Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. We're continuing on our classroom series as we learn to use the program GIMP to create uh, scroll saw portrait patterns. Uh, you can find this lesson and other lessons over at scrollsawvillage.com. Look for the Village University forum where you'll find uh, these videos, some written out instruction, some downloadable additional source material, as well as classroom discussion where you could have all your questions answered. Uh, so we invite you to swing on by and uh, join us in this uh, fun little class. Now this is going to be lesson number six. Uh, we're going to be talking about bridges, peninsulas, lakes, and islands. And we're also going to be discussing a little bit about brushes and how to use those. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you remember last time, we left off with our uh, base pattern of William Shatner, Mr. Captain Kirk, and uh, we're going to be uh, working with this base pattern. Uh, if you remember, we started off with a color photograph, and last week what we did is we desaturated the color so it's black and white. We used the curves function to increase the contrast ratio. And then finally we ran it through a photocopy filter to get us some nice guidelines or a base pattern for us to build our pattern upon. So what is the next step? Well, right now we have a lot of gray tones and uh, right now it's not quite cuttable. So what we're going to have to do is just kind of kind of come through here and clean up the image a little bit and the way we do that is we use brushes. So let me pull over the toolbox over here and the brushes is right here. We click that and uh, we have some uh, brushes options here in the uh, dialog box. Um, over here we could choose our brush size so we could choose whichever size we would like and um, uh, this is a good way to select your brushes, but uh, the way I prefer to do it is I like to actually dock one of my dialog boxes. So I'm going to come up to Window, Dockable Dialogs, and I'm going to come down to, why am I not seeing it? Brushes. There it is. So this brings up a brushes dialog box. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dock this dialog box because it's so much easier just to click the brush we need as opposed to going through this fly out menu and choosing the brush that way. So I'm going to go ahead and dock this. Uh, if you remember right, I have trouble docking um, docking these things while my screen capture software is going on. But as you can see right there, I have it docked now. And now I could just leave this window open and I could select whichever brush I would like. So let's talk a little bit about well, what exactly, why are we using brushes? I guess that's probably the best place to start. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit into his eye here. And uh, basically what we're going to be doing is we're using the uh, paintbrush to uh, clean up our image. So we're using the paintbrush uh, and we'll select black and then uh, we'll just start drawing in what we want. Let's, there we go. So we could uh, draw out our details that we would like to include in our image and uh, kind of fill those in a little bit and the details we do not want we just switch that over to white and we'll paint in white and uh, that's really what we're going to be doing so it's just a lot of uh, manual work just kind of going in uh, darkening in areas that we want to be able to cut and uh, erasing or painting out uh, the areas that uh, we have absolutely no interest in. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. Um, let's go ahead and talk about brush size. Now if you remember right, last time, or actually it was the one of the earlier lessons, I forget which one, but one of the earlier lessons I said that I like to leave my portrait pattern at uh, 150 uh, pixels per inch. And the reason I do that is because I happen to know that a three pixel wide brush is about the same width of a kerf of a scroll saw blade. And I also know a number five brush or a five pixel wide brush is about the same size as a 
uh, of the kerf of a spiral scroll saw blade. So that gives me a really nice point of reference. So usually when I'm creating scroll saw portraits, uh, or any pattern really for that matter, I typically will use a number five uh, brush to fill in all the details and the ones that and the details that really just need to be tight and uh, very fragile I'll, I could switch over to the number three brush and I could feel comfortable uh, creating uh, detail with that and know that it can still be cut. Now you'll have to kind of experiment with uh, different size brushes just to find your own comfort level. Uh, I typically gravitate to the number five uh, brush or the five pixel wide brush and uh, I find as long as the details aren't much more fine than that um, I, I I have enough skill to be able to cut that with my scroll saw and I'm happy with that some people that are a little bit more experienced might be a little bit more comfortable with a number three brush or a three pixel wide brush and um, they're a little bit more comfortable they know they could cut something like that delicate so be it and others that might be brand new you know you might prefer something more like a seven pixel brush or an eight pixel brush so just kind of experiment around with and uh, play around with it and find what you're comfortable with so let's go ahead and talk about brushes I'm gonna create a brand new brush now we have a whole bunch of preset brushes and we can't change these but we can create a brand new brush now we do have a number three brush this is the number three you can see right here is circle three and uh, we also have a number five brush you can see that right there zero five and if we double click this you can see that the radius is two and a half now you gotta remember radius is from the center of the brush to the edge of the uh, brush uh, so you pretty much have to double this in order to get the width of the brush so right now this radius is two and a half which makes it a five pixel brush okay it's a little confusing but uh, uh, that's what that means so let's just go ahead and look at some of these brushes uh, we're gonna create our own obviously we have a whole bunch of pre-made ones we won't be using any of these uh, fancy little effects ones uh, we're really only interested in the round brush uh, of uh, three pixels wide as well as five pixels wide and those are the brushes that we're interested in but we're going to create a new brush anyway just so you can see the different options so we're going to come up here to brush this menu edit brush and we have a brand new brush right up here oh let's try this again I ended up choosing the wrong option see okay so click the little fly up brushes menu we want to create a new brush we don't want to edit a brush we want to create a new brush so let's take a look at this window over here we could title our brush so if you wanted to create a custom brush you could go ahead and give it any name you want right up here uh, this is a preview pane uh, down here are the shapes of the different brushes let me just enlarge this just so we um, kind of just so you can see it a little bit easier um, this is the preview of pain uh, right now we have the circle shape we also have a square shape and we also have a uh, diamond shaped so uh, then we have a whole bunch of different sliders that gives us uh, different options uh, the radius remember this is the radius that we were talking about just a moment ago uh, this determines the size of your brush so if you want a brush that is 10 pixels wide your radius would be 5 if you want a brush that's 5 pixels wide your radius would be 2.5 so just kind of keep that in mind let's switch back over to the round brush uh, spikes actually spikes only refers to the uh, diamond shaped so let me show you what that does so if I add more spikes as you can see it kind of turns into like a little star so that's what spikes are I'm gonna move over back to the circle again uh, the hardness this refers to the uh, the gray area here uh, basically what happens is uh, it'll be uh, solid in the center and then fade out uh, toward the end uh, we normally like to work at hundred percent or 1.0 uh, hardness that means we'll be creating nice crisp lines aspect ratio 
uh, that kind of controls exactly how much it squashes your design. You can have a square or a diamond, you know. So aspect ratio will kind of squash your design there. Uh, angle will obviously create a different angle. So if you wanted a calligraphy pattern, something like this would probably work really well for you. And then spacing, I'm not quite sure what this, uh, what spacing deals with. I think it refers to jitter. And jitter is a uh, function of a brush that you can find in the tool options. And basically instead of uh, uh, dragging across a image you would get a solid line what it would do is it will put little dots and I would think that spacing refers to the space between those dots but I could be mistaken I don't ever use it so you know I don't really know too much about it so this is exactly how we could create our own brushes but since we already have the brushes pre-made there's really no reason for me to create brand new brushes so I'm just gonna go ahead and close that and the brushes I'm going to be using are the uh, number three, which is this one, and the number five, which is this one. Okay. Okay, so let's move this to the side. And uh, I'm going to back up a little bit so that we undo all of our stuff. And let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about the elements that actually make up a scroll saw portrait pattern. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, peninsulas, lakes, islands, and of course bridging. And uh, we'll just go ahead and start illustrating this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this photocopy layer so we have a new layer to work on. So all I did was uh, well, let me do it again. So all I do is highlight the photocopy layer. I click the uh, duplicate button and that creates myself a, uh, a brand new layer. That's a duplicate of the photocopy layer. I'm going to rename that by double clicking and I'm going to call that pattern. Because that's going to be ultimately what this is. It's going to be our pattern. So I'm going to have the uh, pattern layer highlighted and uh, we're going to be painting on this layer in order to create our scroll saw portrait pattern. Now this is going to be something that's going to bite each and every one of us. Sometimes you're going to have the wrong layer selected and when you have that wrong layer selected anything you do to that layer will not be a part of your pattern layer. And I've done this many, many times, and you'll say lots of bad words, and uh, it's just very irritating. So make it a point to make sure that uh, you're working on the proper layer by making sure that the layer you want to be working on it truly is selected. So I'm going to make sure I have the pattern layer selected. I'm going to move this to the side so that uh, it's not in our way. And I'm going to move over the toolbox and... Uh, we're going to be using our paintbrush. I'm going to select a number five paintbrush. That's the one that I'm most comfortable using. And let's just go ahead and zoom into a different area here. And uh, we'll just kind of see what we're going to be working with. So uh, when we create scroll saw portrait patterns, we're going to be just uh, coloring in the dark areas and whiting out the um, unimportant areas. And uh, a lot of this is judgment calls. Uh, so you're going to have to uh, make these choices on your own. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of come in here and uh, darken up a few of these areas. And um, we're going to be doing this throughout the entire pattern. We're going to be getting rid of some of these gray tones and then these uh, white tones we don't want either. So we'll just kind of use our base pattern as a guide so we kind of know which ones to select and which ones not to select and uh, we'll just use those as a guide and then I'm going to use the white I just uh, click the little arrow and that switches the black and the white and that allows me to white certain areas out okay so we just kind of go through and we get rid of some of these these gray areas and basically what we want to be left with is nothing but black and white okay so let me just do a little bit more of this and that way I could kind of illustrate 
the various aspects of a scroll saw portrait pattern, the building blocks of our pattern. This can be kind of a slow process, but uh, you know what, uh, once you're done and you have a finished pattern, I just screwed up there, so if you mess up, either just come up here to edit, undo paintbrush, and that gets rid of it, or you could hold down the control Z, and that will undo it as well. But, um, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll call this kind of, we'll do, we'll call this good. Uh, for now because I have enough here to illustrate my points of uh, building blocks. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, well, let's talk about peninsulas first. Peninsulas really are what makes uh, uh, portrait patterns interesting in my opinion. Uh, I like the little the little nibs that uh, jut out and uh, these unusual shapes that kind of uh, go into these uh, these areas of emptiness you know and that's really what makes it interesting and the more delicate those peninsulas are or those little pieces are um, the more uh, more impressive it is and uh, it just makes everything so very interesting so let's uh, look at a couple of peninsulas here uh, right here I would consider a peninsula uh, right here I would consider a peninsula as well. So these are just like little jutting out areas that go into these uh, these voids. Uh, and that's really what I find interesting about scroll saw portraits. And uh, so something like this is a peninsula and I find that really interesting and I try to incorporate as many of those as possible. And really peninsula really is kind of a real broad term in this context but uh, just create unusual shapes like this I find that incredibly interesting and in fact something like this you might want to uh, play around with so we might um, let's go back to oh, let's go back to our white and we might you know just give it a little bit more of an interesting shape you know and Maybe if you want, maybe it could kind of come in and around like that. You know, shapes like this are what makes portraits interesting. So those are peninsulas. Let's talk about lakes. Lakes are, uh, are just pierced cuts. Uh, this would be considered a lake. Uh, this would be considered a lake too. You know, this is uh, this is one of the Great Lakes, I guess you could call it. Uh, it's just uh, any kind of area that is a void uh, where there is no wood. You're going to be looking through that and seeing a backer. Uh, those are what I consider a lake. Uh, I typically consider these uh, smaller areas to be... It's usually what I'm referring to when I talk about a lake, but uh, really any kind of uh, a void is considered a lake. Uh, islands. Well, on the flip side of lakes, islands are actually chunks of wood that are just floating in the middle of nowhere. These are very, very bad. These are the bane of a scroll solder, saw's existence. Because uh, you cut out one of these uh, little pieces, like this area here, this would be considered an island. This is considered an island, and this would be considered an island. And if you're cutting out all of this black, these islands are just going to fall out of your pattern and just sit on the floor, you know. And uh, what makes uh, scroll saw portraits interesting is that it's all one piece of wood, and that they're completely self-supporting, even though they they appear that they can't be. And that's really what makes them interesting. But you can't have these uh, little islands. Now I'm saying you can't have these, and for the most part, you really shouldn't have these. But there are times when you may want to have them, and that's really going to be a judgment call uh, for yourself uh, that you're going to have to make yourself. But uh, I would say probably 99% of the time you probably do not want to have those. Which brings me to the very last part, the bridges. The bridges are what saves us. This is... Uh, these are what uh, we use to support pieces to make sure that they're not too fragile or to connect islands and lay or these islands that uh, aren't connected to anything else. So 
let's say for instance we have these uh, three islands here. Uh, what we're going to have to do if we don't want these to fall out is we're going to have to bridge them. So we'll just take our paintbrush and we'll create a nice little bridge. Now this island is a peninsula by creating that little bridge. Same thing up here. We'll just maybe extend this thing up and that is no longer an island. It's now created a really nice peninsula. Same thing over here. We'll go ahead and connect this up. Okay, so you kind of see how that works. Now, let's say for instance we're looking at this little peninsula here. Well, maybe that's a little bit too long for your comfort level. Uh, maybe that might be a little bit too fragile. Well, you might want to consider bridging this and to give it additional support. So now we basically bridged that and created a lake. So really, creating portrait patterns is really just a combination of uh, lakes and um, peninsulas and uh, the use of bridging so we don't have these floaties hanging out in the middle of nowhere. So those are the basic concepts of uh, creating a scroll saw portrait pattern. And uh, really, you kind of started to see exactly what we do to create a pattern. We just kind of go in, find an area uh, right here. We got an island. Well, we can't have an island, so let's go ahead and bridge it. So we kind of come up here and we bridge that island in. And let's go ahead and clean up some of these edges. We'll get rid of that island and this island. And remember, this is all just judgment calls. You're going to have to make your own decisions. I'm going to flip that around. I'm going to get rid of uh, a lot of this gray area. I don't need that. And uh, right here. Now we have a little lake here. We have a little lake here. Let's go ahead and connect these lakes so that's one less uh, blade we have to thread into it. So I'm going to connect both of those. Then I'm going to switch over to the white and clean up some of these gray areas. And uh, that's basically what we're going to be doing. We're just going to kind of go through, uh, select the details we find important, uh, darken them up. The details we don't find important we'll get rid of altogether and uh, we'll continue doing this across our entire portrait. Um, Let's see, one more thing I want to cover yeah, while we're playing around with brushes. Uh, one cool little feature, let me just kind of go over here a little bit. Um, one cool thing you could do is uh, if you're a little jittery with uh, running the, uh, the mouse and uh, you don't think you could kind of get in there and uh, put in some of those details by working the mouse and painting them in, here's a cool little function. If you put down a dot somewhere and you hold down the shift key, you'll see this little line. This line will basically create a straight line from that little dot you just put down to the next dot you put down. So I just go ahead and click it again and that creates a straight line and then we just kinda keep doing that and you could basically make a dot to dot. And this is a really nice way to uh, have uh, total control over your brush. Uh, in order to make a curved line, uh, you just put the dots a little bit closer. Let's see how that works. This works really well. So uh, that's just one little tip to make your life a little bit easier. Um, so really, that's pretty much it. This is uh, where we, we kind of leave off. and. Uh, it's kind of up to you to kind of play around with it and uh, make sure you get those bridges in to make sure there's no floaties or uh, islands in the middle of nowhere and uh, kind of play around with peninsulas, create interesting and unique shapes and uh, just use the base pattern as a guide and uh, really a lot of it is just judgment call. Remember we have the uh, photocopy uh, backed up so let's say we just uh, messed up this pattern and we want to back up a little bit uh, we'll just go ahead and delete that and let's fo uh, duplicate the photocopy once again and we're back to where we started so you don't have to go through all those steps 
uh, from before. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of let you guys play around with this and uh, just kind of experiment around and uh, see what you could do. Uh, the next lesson we're going to be talking about how to uh, uh, accentuate uh, certain features, uh, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the hair, and I'll kind of give you some tips on how to do that. And uh, what I'm also going to try to do is I'm going to try to uh, uh, create a, uh, a video demonstration as I go through this entire image and uh, create a uh, portrait pattern from and I'll go ahead and post that. Oh, it'll probably be next week, I'm guessing. Um, but uh, that way you could kind of see how I would approach it. And, um, you know, you might be able to pick up a few tips from that. But just go ahead and play around with it and experiment because uh, that's really what this is. Uh, and uh, before long, you'll have a cuttable portrait pattern uh, that you could be proud of. So I'm going to call her good. Go ahead and play around, and if you have any questions, swing by scrollsawvillage.com. Uh, look for the Village University Forum, and go ahead and ask a question if you get stuck, and I'd be happy to help. And uh, we also have written instructions there, as well as the other video tutorials. So, um, well, I guess until next time, happy scrolling.